Certainly business groups appear to mainly breathe a sigh of relief after the news, but will there be winners all around? Let's get into the details now with John Tammany of Real Clear Markets and Forbes Magazine. He joins me now in studio. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So give us a sense, um, what is really different about this agreement as opposed to NAFTA? Well, when you look at this new NAFTA, it's like that song, meet the new NAFTA, same as the old NAFTA. There's really There's not... There's a song like that, eh? There is some kind of song <laughs> like that, the who. And that's really what we're looking at. Nothing really changed here. Donald Trump made all this noise about the worst free trade deal or trade deal in history. And then he realized that in order to placate the markets, he was going to basically have to give investors what they wanted in the first place, which was NAFTA all over again. There's really nothing to this. And you could say overall that's a positive thing because what Trump wanted was dangerous. But there is a, there's, there are chapters on digital uh, e-commerce and IP protection that weren't in the old NAFTA, right? I mean, there are some advances to address new kinds of commerce. There are a few things. For instance, he, he talks about the uh, quotas on, on cars coming from Mexico and Canada. But what has to be understood there is that they only kick in at a, at a rate of cars that so far Canada and Mexico have not exported to the United States. So basically, there is no tariff there, thank goodness. Uh, the one that concerns me is there is language inserted into the deal that says, if one of these countries, Mexico, Canada, or the U.S., enters into a trade agreement with, quote, a non-market country, that is a very real dig at China, mm -hmm. that enables the other two countries to back out of the deal altogether. That's the one that's really disturbing to me simply because China is the country that any wise country would be wanting to be trading with very openly simply because its market is going is already huge right. and it's getting bigger and bigger. And that was kind of the subtext of this whole NAFTA fight was how does, I mean, what the Trump administration wanted to do was to keep more Chinese auto parts out of the supply chain and they tried to use this agreement to do that. Do you think it's going to be successful in that respect? Well, no, I don't think so. Ultimately, uh, goods flow to where they need to go. And I think what President Trump is realizing here, and thank goodness, is that as powerful as the president is, the stock market is exponentially more powerful. The good news here is that the world is so connected in terms of uh, flow of goods around the world. And, and, and in that sense, it's really difficult to break up what has been advantageous for the world for a long time. The fact that we divide up work with, with people around the world mm -hmm. is the source of American wealth. For Trump to try to break that would have been hugely dismantling the stock markets. And I think that's why you're seeing markets rally. He cannot do what he wanted to do. He did make the promise that jobs will come back to the United States. And I wonder, is that realistic? given this agreement? It's not a serious argument to make. And if, if, in fact, these jobs did come back to the United States, it would be a sign of the U.S. reversing. Uh, let's be very clear. We have moved on from manufacturing. In a sense, so is China moving on from right. manufacturing. That's what advanced countries do. The minute the jobs of the past come back is the minute that you're going to see massive amounts of investment outflows leaving the United States to countries that want to basically race into the future. We are the richest country on earth precisely because we've pushed manufacturing overseas. To bring that back would be hugely damaging to the economy. What Trump's promising is not going to happen. He's also promised that this is going to be better uh, for Americans than Trans-Pacific Partnership. I wonder, even beyond addressing that boast, because I suspect I know what you're going to say there, um, what, it, what kind of position does this leave North America in as a trading bloc when it comes to competition with CPTPP countries, and now we've got uh, the RCEP, the uh, free trade agreement between India, Australia, the Asian economies uh, that's set to be signed later this year. I mean, will the North American economies be in a better negotiating position, a better competitive position as a result of this agreement? I, you know, I don't think so. I, I think what's got to be stressed is that the open country is always the winning country. There's this notion that you've got to make good trade deals. Hmm. To argue that is to show a fundamental misunderstanding of the genius of trade. The country that's most open to the world's plenty is always the most advantage because its workers get the most in return for their paycheck, but also companies most exposed to market realities evolve quickest and best. And so to make a deal is to suggest that somehow imports harm you. No, 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 no. Imports always and everywhere improve you. So I think the very notion I reject outright, and it would be great if other countries would point this out, that would, in President Trump trying to deal, he is weakening the United States every time.
We have a free trader on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for your time. John, John Tammany, editor of Real Clear Markets. Thanks again.